She was the first farmer, not just a woman, but a farmer to test her cages on the Volta Lake. And at the time, Volta Lake was a no-go area for any cage fish farming. All kudos to uh, Patricia Safo as a woman who has performed so well in Aqua Kojifa, one of the pioneers of fish farming in Ghana. is a male-dominated venture but this is Patricia Safo of Crystal Lake who against all odds was able to stand all the turbulence that faced Ghana's aquaculture industry. It was a determination to start commercial fish farming in Ghana that brought us here. All the infrastructure that you see, we had to do it from scratch. We had to pull electricity here. We are working on expanding our capacity, and that is with a new hatchery almost doubling our capacity. But so we've actually put together a very big pond, which is almost doubling this facility in terms of production output. This is Patricia Safu, who is endowed with the passion for natural resource uh, utilization and so uh, commits herself to utilizing the tilapia genetic resource that we have and also ensuring that the environment is kept safe. Having stayed in business this long, I think that we've gone um, bust a few times to, over the 20 years because of the very high infrastructure costs which we had to establish before we started. Challenges has been many along the line. When you have a business and you don't have any police very close by, you do encounter some thefts from time to time. We encountered commercial theft which uh, totally ran our cages to zero with fish full of them. And so we had to start for, at the very beginning. And then we've had fire during the Hamatan. Sometimes you get people trying to chase animals and they light fire. Um, a few years ago, we had fire which burnt all our water intake points. That was quite devastating. The challenge of being a woman, a minority in the sector, it's been quite a challenging trip. But when you have a good team around you who understand is very important. As an entrepreneur, there have been times, several times, when I didn't have anything in my bank account and yet I had workers to pay, I had personal bills, but I didn't give up. Challenges will come no matter what you are doing, but your ability to ride on the waves, believing that the sun will definitely shine another day, take up whatever your dreams are and work very, very hard towards it. We were the first people to be given permits on the Volta Lake. So we started um, the cage culture on the Volta Lake. She was so passionate about aquaculture uh, and promoting the locally produced now tilapia. So she consulted Water Research Institute, um, the Aquaculture Research and Development Center in Akosombo uh, for us to demonstrate the possibility of having cage fish farming uh, on the lake. And we simulated a pond situation just like a lake system and we got good yields. So that motivated her to put cages in Volta Lake. I'm talking about the early 2000s. Their outputs are enormous and they are also employing a lot of people and giving training to many, many, many people. Somehow, I am so stubborn that I don't give up but I listen to advice. Coming into a forest and setting up an aquaculture farm, that's one challenge. The challenge of having the vision to start aquaculture on a commercial stake on the Volta Lake was also not easy. 
and the challenge of actually sticking with it over 20 years when so many fish farms have collapsed. We stuck with the Akosombo strain, which was an economic suicide because the farmers did not want that. They wanted the mixed breed. But we persevered with it and then COVID also came along. So we've had double suffering. Chinese tilapias, you know, were imported into their country, you know, breaking down the markets for the locally produced uh, tilapia. And then also, uh, you also have the strains of Nile tilapia coming also again from Asia that also sort of uh, reduced the patronage of the locally developed Akusomo strain. The COVID-19 outbreak clearly has had a very devastating economic effect across the country and the aquaculture sector is no different from that. We have also suffered because um, when those who are growing table-sized fish, they have to sell their fish before they can come and buy fingerlings to stock their cages. And the COVID meant that sales were slow. So it means that production has moved back a bit. This COVID effect coupled with the introduction of the virus on the Volta Lake, which wiped a lot of fish, has clearly affected uh, farmers like us. Those who had even fish to sell, because you have to sell your existing stock before you can restock, they could not sell because of the lockdown. So clearly we could not sell. And we still have fingerlings, which has affected our cash flow. She has one philosophy that once you keep your environment clean and safe, you are protected and your generation is assured of living. It's not been an easy trip. We want to ensure that the monitoring of farms in terms of the genetic material they use is very, very key as part of the whole compliance issue for the aquaculture sector. Not only that, we want to ensure that people who breach this genetic issues by bringing in all illegal species, viruses, and it should have a very, very strong purity if anybody goes that way. There should be a level playing field and the monitoring has to be enhanced. We want to see more genetic mapping on all the farms and we want everybody who choose to be a farmer to comply with the laws of Ghana. We need more research into the Akosomo strain to enhance it even further so that it will become competitive. So that when people are investing in the sector, they will feel that their bottom line is going to yield a lot of positive returns. So there is a need for further investment into the Akosomo strain to make it comparable to the foreign strain. The solution is not to go and bring some foreign species elsewhere. That doesn't work. We should invest and ensure that the structures are in place so that we can grow our sector from bottom up. For the consumers, now they have a choice. They have a choice to either eat Akosombo strain tilapia or the foreign half cast fish. I say that they should choose wisely and choose the Akosombo strain. Being a member of the consortium team on the tilapia seed project, the Crystal Lake Farm, they have been enormously uh, supportive, providing the experiences that they have gone through, sharing these experiences to other farmers, and then her facility, which is one of, I would say, you know, the, the best uh, in, when it comes to hatchery facilities. She has offered this facility for the training of other fish farmers and hatchery operators. So we appreciate the supportive role of Patricia Safo. The training for the hatchery operators was carried out on our premises and we participated. When you have such a support, then the industry is said to have a driving force. So Patricia's demonstration of commitment in aquaculture industry should be emulated. Particularly excited about this TISIT project, which Crystal Lake is a partner. The project will, first of all, improve the Akosombo strain, get it to be more acceptable commercially. And through that, we also hope that Crystal Lake 
we will draw a lot of awareness on the custom wool strain and hopefully we will be able to sell more fingerlings to the farmers. As a major hatchery operator, Tilapia Seed Project delivered brew stocks of the Akosomo stream that's a locally developed and improved now Tilapia stream. Now through a certification process by the Fisheries Commission, the processes for production has been taken care of. Processes for production has been well scrutinized so that the fish or the fingerlings that come out are healthy and they are safer for any farmer to go for. So we, we encourage the use of Akosomo stream and then the supply of fingerlings from Crystal Lake is assured uh, because one, it is a stream that has been developed and released by the CSI Water Research Institute, ADEC, and then also the process of producing the fingerlings have been vetted. So we are very much assured that Farmers who are getting fingerlings from Crystal Lake are getting authentic fish and they are promoting locally available Nile tilapia genetic resource, which does not produce any means for genetic contamination of our biodiversity. The end users will go to the market requesting for a customer strain of fish. Anytime they request, we know that people will buy it from a very reliable source. The tilapia seed will continue to engage the services uh, towards the support for training uh, farmers, um, hatchery operators, nursery operators in and around Volta region, Eastern region and, and so on. The training is also a very good initiative of CTSED and we hope it will bring a lot of good aquaculture practices by farmers which will ensure and increase their economic viability of their farms. We make money from repeat business. So it is in our interest that all farmers who we work with are profitable and come back again to buy fingerlings from us. So we are in the business for the long term. All women will celebrate you for your investments and your drive in, in aquaculture industry and your passion to ensure that the environment is safe and that no activity which otherwise undermines sustainable production of tilapia is eradicated. You can be pioneers in different projects, different sectors. You have to believe in what you are doing and you should not give up easily but most importantly, you should listen to advice, evaluate all the advice you can get and pick the best out of it. Get a good team around you and we can make more impact as women. <laughs>